What's going on guys, Dan Watson. I've got the GH5 here and I've been able to shoot this now for a wedding and a couple other events. And so I wanted to kind of give you my impressions after using this thing, as well as show you some of the footage that I've been able to shoot. Now, if you want to see all the footage, uh, there's over two minutes worth of a lot of stuff from that wedding. Take a look at this link up here. It's also in the description below and check that out. It was all shot uh, for, well, there was some 1080p, some 180 frames per second, a low light test in there, 4K up to 60 frames per second. Everything was 8-bit though, because I don't need 10-bit for this. And honestly, 10-bit has some issues right now with Adobe Premiere. So that's kind of unfortunate, but I don't really need 10-bit for what I'm shooting most of the time. It's good to have internally, but uh, that, yeah. So that's that for that one. So let's kind of go over some of the things that I thought. Well, I was actually shooting this wedding with someone at a GH4. So I was able to kind of compare them directly uh, between each other. And I will say that this is a much nicer camera. The feel is great. The ergonomics are amazing. It's a camera that I will say is just a heavy upgrade from what we've been dealing with before. It is clear that Panasonic has put some really cool things and thought into this camera. Now, uh, these are kind of jingling on me right now, so I don't like that. This, these are very noisy. I wish they had come up with a better system for holding the strap down, but I mean, that's very minor on that one. Uh, one thing I will say is that I shoot weddings, and one huge thing for me is having unlimited recording. I was a lifesaver. I can't believe I ever shot without that. It is huge to be able to start this thing before 10 minutes before the wedding and not have to worry about having to stop this thing until it's over. I can shoot a whole wedding day on 180, 128 gig cards. So that's what I use. I don't need the hot swappable, but if you need those, they're there. And overall, the build quality is amazing. I love the new joystick. It, it, is, it is one of the best feeling joysticks that I've been able to show on a camera. And it's extremely accurate. You don't accidentally press it at all. Yeah, overall, the ergonomics on this thing are great. All the buttons have great feel. And there's tons of customization on this thing. Battery life is definitely down from before, but it's still usable. It took me two to three batteries. I think I was just on my third battery to finish out the day. And usually I was comfortable with two batteries before. I would always carry three though, so it's not that big of a deal. But it is a little bit worse than before. To be expected, I'm shooting a lot of higher end stuff on that one. Now in low light, I will say that this is now much better. I was happy with the results up to about 3200 ISO. 6400 was pushing it for me. 3200 is really my minimum for shooting a wedding with the type of lenses that I shoot with without using speed boosters and stuff like that. So that was good for me. I wish 6400 was usable, but I understand this is a Micro Four Thirds camera. It's not going to be great in that area. But overall, it was a big improvement over the GH4 and now something that I can comfortably use in low light. And if I need to go above that, then really I can just do a better job with selecting glass and using speed boosters if I have to uh, for that one. So yeah, 4K looks amazing on this camera. And like I said, it was 8-bit, but uh, I did use 180 frames per second in 1080p. That also was a great feature to have. I did use the pull, uh, do focus pulls with the touch. I will say that one thing is awesome is it was so easy to set up. It literally took a couple seconds to set that up and be able to do focus pulls. I thought that this was gonna take minutes to set up and as a wedding videographer, you don't have that kind of time in a lot of cases. So it was very quick, very easy to use from that perspective. Now let's talk autofocus. I'm shooting this on a 5D Mark IV. I use that a lot for weddings. Uh, it is, it does have a good autofocus system. It is able to track a bride coming down the aisle and it does work better than I could do trying to do that manual focus, especially if you don't have something like monitors and rack focus systems. This camera can pull it off. I feel very confident right now that it's actually tracking my face it, with all of this other stuff going on and I'm backlit. Uh, pretty well and the sun just came out too so it's probably lighting me a little too much from that side but we'll see what it, it does but you'll be able to take that and if it gets through this video all right you'll see how good that system is this is not to that level it is not good enough where i can con i can actually rely on continuous autofocus at all point to point is good manual focus has tons of options on it so that's great i will gladly sacrifice that but i do wish it had that ability if it did this would be the ultimate camera, I do think, because if you do have a good autofocus system, there are times that it is amazing to use. I think one of the biggest reasons that people don't use autofocus more is it sucks. If you're using a camera that doesn't have good autofocus, of course you would not use autofocus. But anyone who's had a dual pixel Canon camera or Sony a6500, something like that, they use autofocus a lot more. And the reason why is it's actually amazing. So. That's my thoughts on it. Uh, it's, it's a big debate right now. Uh, Panasonic did kind of promise us a little bit more than they're delivering. So that is a big negative to me. Hopefully they can fix that a little bit. But 
yeah overall this is an amazing camera i bought it i am so happy with this purchase i think i'm gonna have to pick up one or two more because i think this is now going to be my choice for videography shooting from now on and i typically use the uh, g7 a lot as a back camera it works extremely well put a nice wide aperture lens the 4k looks unbelievable i use it for most of my youtube videos and i'm gonna have to pick up another one of these to go with that and uh, probably get rid of all my Canon cameras for shooting. Canon has kind of rumored that they might be pulling out a new firmware update for their cameras that enable H.264 4K with a lesser crop. That might be something that's worth considering. But right now, Canon is just not ideal for 4K recording. 1080p is pretty good. And these just give you so much more features than a camera like that, that it's just, it's hands down one of the most amazing cameras to come on the market today. So stay tuned, a ton of new stuff coming out on this camera. Again, check out those links for all of that footage. And if you want, stay tuned with me on Facebook and Instagram for some pictures. I'll be posting some stuff from this camera too because it's actually a pretty good uh, photography camera as well. It has some cool features on it. it. Takes advantage of mirrorless. This is something that I like. It, mirrorless is a cool technology, but so, for so long it didn't utilize it for many of its advantages. It was just an alternative. There's some awesome things that you can do with mirrorless that you can't do with DSLRs, and this is putting those to the test. So stay tuned, watch some more. Thanks for hanging out with me, and uh, happy shooting with this thing. I highly recommend it so far.